Greetings, viewers, and welcome back to Just Short of Fantastic, and welcome back to the RV. Because Pride Month may be over, but we don't stop sharing and caring. And this month, I have three trans novels to share with y'all. All aboard the Trans Book Rec Express! Toot toot! So instead of doing the full book review format, I'm just going to do these three rapid fire, going from one extreme to the other. Let's do this. First up is Manhunt by Gretchen Felger Martin. All three of these books came to me through Instagram, but I was particularly excited to read this one. It's a dystopia horror novel, and I am fascinated with the dystopia genre, with uh, Margaret Atwood's Mad Adam trilogy being a shining example of the genre, but most dystopia novels do not have a lot of queer representation in them, and that's where this book comes in. Most of the protagonists are trans, and the narrative is focused on just how horrific the end of the world can be for those individuals. In a North America rocked by a virus that turns all male-bodied individuals into feral cannibals, this is a gut-wrenching, heartbreaking story of survival. Not for the faint-hearted. It's a disturbing and vividly detailed nightmare, but it is satisfying to know that it exists. Queer up for the end of the world! I can easily see this one getting a TV series adaptation a la The Handmaid's Tale, and I can't wait. I'd probably watch it. Please note that this one does have a lot of sex and sexual violence in it, so if that's not your jam, skip this one. Next up, we have Dead Collections by Isaac Fellman. I wouldn't necessarily call this one a horror novel, but it definitely falls somewhere on the supernatural spectrum because the main protagonist, Soul, is a trans man who contracts vampirism. It's, an, it's a contemporary take on the whole vampire thing, which I really enjoyed. Otherwise, the novel is more of a queer romance with Soul meeting Elsie, who has decided to donate her late wife's papers from a moderately famous TV show to Soul's archive. Over the course of the book, the two fall in love, and they have to navigate grief, discrimination, and the unique difficulties of Soul's vampirism. It's a cute book, and I especially applaud it for acknowledging the fact that human beings are always in flux, and that we don't need permission to call ourselves whatever feels right in the moment. This one is a good entry point for the wide and deep spectrum of trans narratives. It especially resonated with me because I, too, spent a lot of time reading and writing fanfiction and watching queer-coded TV while I was growing up. Speaking of queer coding, and on the other end of today's spectrum, is my personal favorite, Peter Darling by Austin Chant. Put simply, this is a trans queer retelling of the Peter Pan narrative, and it changed my life. I can already tell you it's going to have a large influence on my novel series as I go back and rewrite my books. I borrowed this one from Hoopla, the digital library, because my library did not have a physical copy. Actually, you can see I own these books. My library did not have copies of either of these two books, so I went out and bought copies for myself because I knew I would want to own them. But this one was available on Hoopla, the digital library, so I borrowed the ebook and I read the entire thing in one sitting because it is so freaking good. When I finished it, I immediately went on Amazon, the only place that I could find it, to order myself a copy because I knew that I would have to have a physical copy of this in my library, and also I wanted to support the author because more stories like this, please. In this book, Peter Darling returns to Neverland after 10 years in the real world because in Neverland, no one questions Peter's identity, especially not Captain Hook, who is the only person who has ever engaged Peter on equal terms. Now that he's older, Peter declares all-out war on Hook and the pirates, and now that he's older, their encounters have a new and sensual charge to them. This book is for any Wendy who would really rather be a Peter. It is a masterful spin on an old classic, and I cannot recommend it enough. And there you go! Three trans book recommendations to add to your summer reading list. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm going to go sit by the lake and read Jacqueline Carey's Starless, another highly anticipated queer recommendation. Happy reading, and until next time, stay just short of fantastic.